Welcome back everybody, JJ Shankles, the Goat Toasters, back again. Today we're talking about macro photography, making small things larger than life in, since we're all kind of stuck inside and we don't have the ability to go out and shoot amazing landscapes, we can take what small things we do have and make them larger than life. It's a great way to explore the house. And if you've never tried macro photography, now is a perfect time and I'm going to give you five simple tips to get you started. First things first though, there is a little bit of gear you're going to need. The first way to do it is more expensive is buying an entire macro lens. I haven't even done that. Unless you know you're going to get into macro photography, then you might want to go that way. A better way to dip your feet in the water, and what I enjoy using, is extension tubes. So this is for the Nikon Z system but they just attach onto the end of your camera and extend the lens out, giving you the same effect of macro by decreasing the focus distance of that lens. You still keep the same sharpness of your lens, and since there's no glass in here, buying cheap ones isn't going to degrade your image. As you can see, there's nothing in the middle there. You can stick your hand right through it. And this is a smart one, so there are the copper contacts that will transfer the uh, signal from your lens to the camera. So autofocus will still work, auto exposure, all the data of the capture will still be embedded into the image. And all for around $20 to $30. This, is, this one is by Miki, but I usually just look on Amazon and find whatever's the cheapest one, but I do enjoy Miki. It is a lot of metal and plastic on here, and it works really well. So I'm going to show you how to attach them to the Nikon Z6. It's a super simple situation. Remove the lens, attach these on. Since I'm going to be doing this, most of this at 60 millimeters, I'm going to attach both these lenses, <clears throat> both the extension tubes. It's an 11 millimeter and an 18 millimeter, so that equals 29 millimeters. That means you don't have to be almost touching the lens to take your pictures, which I like to do that a lot. A little bit more for video to give a little bit of distance there. And now you're ready to go. Super easy. The camera works just like before, except your focus distance is going to be here instead of starting out here and beyond. It's gonna be in this range somewhere. So the first thing you gotta do is find something with some texture. It really brings out texture. I think that's the most beautiful part of macro photography. But first, coffee. Now let's go. So tip number one is to get in close. So find something with a lot of detail. Here's a circuit board, this is a Raspberry Pi. Or a keyboard is another one that I really love because I have a lot of really nice keyboards and the texture on the keycaps makes a super interesting thing up close. So here's a couple of those shots. They're looking pretty good, but this moves us to step two, is to close down that aperture. Make the aperture number a lot bigger. It's easy to start out with as wide of an aperture as possible because you're wanting to get as much light in there as possible. But with, the, but with this macro tube, your depth of field is going to be razor thin, and a lot of times you can't get more than one or two details in focus. It's amazing sometimes you can only get a couple hairs in focus on the cat I'll be taking pictures. And so a big tip is to step down that aperture, try to get as wide of a depth of field as possible. But with this, it is a lot easier to mount it on a tripod. I've done a couple shots with a wider aperture mounted on this tripod that I'm currently filming on, so I'll just insert those here. The next tip is to focus on the lighting. Get next to a big window is usually a large light source if it's decently bright out. It is overcast and the sun is currently rising right now um, and it'll get brighter as the day goes but even here in the morning the light works really well to be very soft and actually pretty bright. It takes a lot of indoor lights to equal what the sun can do in a lot of situations. And it's free. You don't have to buy this gear, just use a window. But with macro photography, it's very important not to block the light with the lens. It's so easy to get in close and then you're casting a shadow on your subject. In different situations, I'll use a lens hood. Sometimes this is good to be able to rest it on your subject to be able to get it as close as possible. But it's very easy for this lens hood to also block the light from getting to your subject. So since this isn't a clear lens hood, sometimes I'll use it but then sometimes I'll take it back off. But again, you do have to get creative with this. Sometimes you want to use those shadows to your advantage to block out certain parts of the shot, just to be interesting with shadows are now a huge part of your picture. You just have to get creative with what you want in your shot. Step four is to use that shallow depth of field. It's an odd situation where you're gonna have a slice of life 
that's in focus and the world is going to be blurry all around it. So you can isolate one single object. You would need a super wide aperture, very expensive lens to get that. Instead, it's only a $20 macro extension tube and you'll get a super fine slice of focus. Pets are a great subject, especially like Chance the Napper here. He loves staring out the window, so I can leave him here for a couple hours and he'll just stare out the window. He's actually a great model. Tip number five is to alter time. You're already altering space with this macro photography, taking small things, blowing them up larger than life. Go ahead and alter time while you're at it by speeding things up or slowing things down. In this situation, I've done a lot of time lapses of ice melting or you can do slow motion of the cat moving its head around. I've done a lot of interesting things with that. But it's a lot of fun to play around with the changing of details since details are what you're focusing on with macro photography. Look at them changing. So watching this, or if you can do cookies baking, or something cooking on the stove top, whatever you wanna work with, there's a million possibilities and you just gotta use your creativity to reach out there and see them. But this one's melting ice. It's good to get a tripod, get it in nice and close, and then focus up on it. I have done another video on time lapses with the Z6. I'll link it down below or up above somewhere. And it's the same settings except now you have a macro tube and so your focus distance is gonna be a lot closer. And that's about wraps it up with our five tips today. Hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure you like and subscribe down below. Leave any comments if you have any extra questions. Hope you decide to go out and try some macro tubes. I really enjoy them. They're a cheap way to take your lens you already have and get that super short focusing distance. If you watched all the way through this video, make sure you like and subscribe down below. It really means a lot to me to see all the subscribers to this channel. I really appreciate that you guys are enjoying this content and I do read every single comment you leave down below and it really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. So stay inside today, take some pictures, take some videos, very close up of your subjects, and make sure you're staying safe, washing your hands a lot, and have a great day. Go Toaster out.